Hey folks, in this interview, I'm speaking with Aaron Ng. It's all about food photography. This is Twitter. Hey, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today, I have a little something tasty for you guys. I get to speak with Aaron Ng. Aaron is a food photographer based in Northern California in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're gonna dive into her career, where things are going right now, especially with kind of like where the pandemic is and how that has affected restaurants in San Francisco and then subsequently her business. And then also just what it takes to be a food photographer, how she got into it, and why does she find this genre of photography so tasty? Erin Ng, welcome. Welcome to This Week in Photo. How's it going? Thank you. I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No, it's good to have you. I have so many, so many questions to throw at you. Uh, sure. But first of all, let's let's just kick off with with a little bit of background. You know, Aaron, sure. Ng, you're in, you're in San Francisco. You're a food photographer. I'm sure mm -hmm. there's more to it than that. So give us give us a little more detail. Give us the the Aaron Ng Avengers origin story. Sure, sure. Um, well, thank you again for having me. Sure. Um, it's really, really cool to, to be on the show and get to share a little bit of my story. Um, so I started out in food photography kind of uh, by chance because my, um, my studies were originally in medicine. So I thought I was going to be doing that. So in college, in my last year, I decided to do a little uh, fun thing in the summer. And I interned at a food photography studio, um, kind of as like my last hurrah. And from there, I, one, just discovered that this was even a job. Um, and I got to meet a lot of really, really cool chefs and food stylists. I got to work um, at basically a, a magazine that the food photographer was starting at the time. Um, and being on set just really uh, excited me. Like, and I, I decided after I graduated that maybe this was something I wanted to try out. Uh, so after I graduated, I came home back to San Francisco. Um, by that time, the magazine had uh, been, you know, kicking off. It had been a year already, um, and I got to work for the magazine. Uh, I got to shoot for the magazine and do things that I think probably I wasn't qualified to do yet at the time, but because <laughs> um, the, the editors were just so uh, generous with their, um, their time and allowing me to uh, really dive into to helping them because, you know, they were starting up. They like needed as much help as possible. Yeah. Um, I got to get my hands dirty in a lot of different things. Um, so that was kind of the initial exposure I had to the food photography world. Um, and after working there for a few months, I really got to meet chefs and um, again, some stylists that were helping out as well. Um, and that kind of branched off into me uh, meeting more of my own clients and kind of offering my services to different restaurants um, from people that I met at the magazine. So that was kind of like the starting hub of it all. Yeah, um, and yeah. since then, it's been five, six years almost. Wow. Um, and now my clients kind of range from uh, food publications to national consumer packaged good companies, uh, food tech startups, and uh, you know numerous restaurants around the Bay Area and food businesses. Yeah, that is so cool. That is so cool. And, then, you know, we'll we'll dive into the COVID side of this, you know, where and hmm. that, the effect that that's had on on San Francisco and, and subsequently your yeah. business. I'm curious, you know, about food photography in general. When I when I look at food, you know, photography in general, from a photographer standpoint, I look at it like it's got to be one of the food photography in general has got to be one of if you do your job right, it's got to be one of the most unsung genres of photography because it's not like you're looking at it you're not looking at it like oh look at the great photography you're looking at it look at this great food and i want yeah. the food you know and if you draw attention to the photography that's kind of it's a negative do you find that like it's if you've done your job right kind of like a retoucher if you've done your job right then no one notices you what, what do you think about that oh i see what you're saying um well yeah i think I, I will say this, it's very easy to make food look bad. Like there's yeah, very many- Right, exactly. Look very unappetizing. So I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, I think that's why I really am grateful for working with really talented stylists who whose jobs are to really make this food look presentable and make my job a lot easier when I shoot it and I light it um, to have a final product that is something people want to dive right into. They want to eat it immediately. It makes them hungry. Um, that's the whole goal of my job. Um, so, I mean, I don't, 
personally feel underappreciated in that way, but I definitely feel very appreciative of, um, you know, the very talented stylists and chefs who, you know, do a lot of work to make that food look really gorgeous. Right, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're, you're, your customer, for the most part, is the chef, right? I mean, the, the end uh, result, or is it, right? Is the customer the chef or is the customer the, the restaurant patron? Uh, the, well, no, my, my clients really, it's, it's a pretty big range. I would say chefs are, um, part of the clientele. A lot of times when a restaurant, um, hires me, it's normally like the owner. Sometimes it's a chef owner. Um, but restaurants actually make up only a portion of my clientele. So a lot of my clients are mm -hmm, actually food businesses, food startups, uh, again, like consumer packaged good companies. Um, it really kind of, there's a whole range of clientele within the food space. Um, but a lot of times, you know, the chefs like to be there when it is a restaurant shoot to obviously oversee um, how their food is being presented, uh, how, you know, we're styling it, making sure that it's representative of the food that they actually serve within their establishment. So you're in it. So take us to, into a day in the life of one of these shoots. Are you are you like carting in a bunch of gear and the chef is is preparing a bunch of meals and you're mm-hmm. shooting them? I always thought like ignorantly, I always thought that, OK, they're they're doing this in a studio and they're everything set up just right. Or is it a combination yeah. of both? How, how does it work? What's a combination? Day in the life? Yeah, it really depends. Sometimes I shoot on location, which would mean I would go into the restaurant. I would, you know, like you said, haul in the gear. Um, We normally uh, set up like a little set that's um, away from uh, the patrons, if there are patrons that day. Um, and generally, a lot of stuff has happened before we even get onto, onto set. Um, a shot list has been established. We know exactly what we're going to get. Um, the chefs are prepped. The kitchen is prepped. They know what they're going to be cooking. And I normally have uh, at least a stylist. I, I really, really you know, recommend that, even with restaurants, because sometimes they feel like, well, it's our food. Like We want to be the ones to, to style everything. But um, you know, stylists are trained to really work with me in terms of knowing how to place things where the light is better, um, where things are going to be featured um, just more visually appealing for me, for me from a photography standpoint, not just like as a, as a chef, because their idea of what looks good may not translate directly to the photography. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, so there um, we would set up the, the scenes um, at the restaurant and we would shoot, you know, for that day. But a lot of times if it's uh, um, a consumer packaged good company, for example, we would shoot in studio and we would actually build out that set to make it look like wherever they, you know, want that, um, that shot to be representative of whether that's like in a kitchen or, you know, someone's, someone's home, or we're creating a scene that looks like it's, you know, at, um, at a park or something like that. It it really depends what the client wants. And we, we kind of build that out and we scout locations based on the need. That is so cool. What a, what a yeah. fascinating, fascinating genre of photography. When, when you, I'm curious, like when you look at other genres, like say portraiture or landscape, you know, the lighting, light is light and the properties of light is, you know, is not genre dependent. How do you mm-hmm. form your light? Like, how do you, like when you're, when you're trying to tell the story of a particular dish, what does that look like? Are you just like, okay, we're just going to put a big giant softbox on it and then stylus goes at it. Are you like, you know, getting in there and doing point light sources to get a specular, um, yeah. this shiny thing? Like how detailed do you get with the lighting? Oh, we get pretty detailed with it. And again, these are things that we kind of talk about in pre-production when we uh, talk with the client, like what kind of field do you want to go with? You know, do you want it to look like we're shooting in an open light kitchen or do you want to make it look a little bit more um, moody, like we're in a dark sort of um, rustic kitchen? So based on their styles, we really build that light. Um, And so it, it gets pretty detailed, especially when it comes to reflective surfaces, which happen like they occur all over the place within food photography, you know, whether that's like a little salt shaker that's made of metal or, you know, a lot of um, liquids that come in glasses, wine bottles, things like that. So uh, what you see and versus like what looks what it looks like on set could be very, very different because we have like flags everywhere. We're trying to block light here. We're trying to prevent, you know, reflections there. Um, so we try to do as much in in the lighting um, portion to uh, eliminate things that we would have to do in post. So mm-hmm. it does get pretty nitty gritty. And then when you start getting into like little things too, like we want, you know, the 
the beer to look a little bit more reflective right here or the light to shine through this glass, then we have to start, you know, compositing things. And so it, it can get to a really pretty granular, you know, level, but yeah, like generally we try to, we try to solve most problems with the lighting and in the actual production. It almost sounds, it almost sounds like real estate photography. I was going to ask you about the compositing oh, side of it. Like, are uh -huh. you making multiple shots? And I know real estate photographers do because they need, yeah. you know, if they're, if they're showing a, a window with an outdoor scene, they need the outdoor right. not to be blown out. They need, you know, and they may take multiple shots because yeah. of reflections or all these things and then, then composite them later and harvest different parts of the shot. So you're doing something similar with, with mm -hmm. food only on a, a smaller scale, but still no yeah. less intricate, right? Yeah, because a lot of things can't sit on set for too long. So for example, something I did recently was, you know, we want the beer to look freshly poured and bubbly and frothy, but yeah. um, that literally lasts like five to 10 seconds. And so we need to shoot that really quick after the stylist gets that on set. And then after that, maybe we need to, you know, melt some cheese over here. And then that's like another thing the stylist has to do. And I get another shot of that. And then at the end, I have to composite those two things together. So it makes everything look like it all happened at once. And it's like the perfect moment. Um, so that's one example. So there, there are definitely situations that occur, um, especially like, you know, with I'm thinking about like salads also. Uh, greens can't really sit on set for too long, especially mm. with you know, like the lights and everything and like, oh, melty things, ice cream, sorbets, sauces, those things are, you know, you got to get that, you know, within seconds, if not just maybe a minute, like of, of it hitting set. You're so a lot me. of times- You're killing me yeah. here. I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry just listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sauces and salads and yeah. wine. <laughs> well, when you're looking at it on set all day, you're hungry in the beginning, but then at the end of the day, you're like, I can't look at another salad for- <laughs> <laughs> I look at sauce for another day or a week. Oh man! So what? Are, what are some some uh, some tricks? Because I've I've heard of some. Like I know, like basic things. Like people may take a spray can and spray things down to put like yeah. you know glistening on a bottle or something. Yeah. What are some like secret Aaron Ng tips for people that want to <laughs> up their up their food game? You know, for Instagram or whatever. Oh, for Instagram. Okay, well. Do you mean from like a food styling standpoint or like lighting? Because a lot of the food styling, I, I do a little, but mostly the food stylists do. I would say the number one tip is just you can't make a good photo without good light. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just number one. Like if you're not by good light, it's it's not going to happen. I like basically never shoot at dinner anymore because that's just not like the lighting isn't conducive of a good image. Um, so that's just like the number one thing. Cause like people oftentimes are like, how do I make this photo better? And then I'll ask them like when they shot it. And it's like in like a dark steakhouse with like one specular <laughs> light over it. And like the food looks like alienish. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah. you can't really make that any better because that's the light that's available to you. So that's my, my number one thing. Um, for just in general, if you're like shooting on your phone and doing like iPhone food photography, um, yeah, trying to find like a big window, a nice diffuse light source is is ideal. Um, what else would I say in terms of like food styling? Um, like if you want to get like really into like actually styling out the thing that you 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 want like maybe just made. Um, hmm, let me think actually. Yeah, there's a lot of tricks in there. Like well, so many things. I, I honestly, the the one thing that I keep thinking about though is light, because I think that's where most mm -hmm. people mess up. It's just like not picking a good light source. That's you know like what I was really trying. Like tell me, tell me yeah. what you think about this. What I what I've tried. I'm no food photographer, you know, and I've even slowed down or stopped taking pictures of my restaurant food. Obviously, yeah. who's, who's been to a restaurant <laughs> lately? Um, right. Which we're gonna talk about talk oh. about in a second. But but the uh, portrait mode on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. for shallow depth of field yeah that's that's awesome you know I love <laughs> for, it. for just isolating things and and just yeah. making anything a background it's fantastic for that kind of mm -hmm. stuff yeah i, I use love it all it. the time in fact you, i mean yeah I, I use it all the time i think it's so incredible what like phones can do nowadays i used yeah. to actually bring like dslrs out when i was like you know going about town or like going to restaurants yeah. and now i'm like ne never again because i can just bring just bring this the thing. Phone does it all. Yeah. No. It does it all. Well, 
let's let's talk about that a little bit. Just the like we talked about at the beginning of the interview, just the the pandemic situation. And San Francisco mm-hmm. is one of those cities that got you know. The, I drove. I don't live in San Francisco. I live outside the city. But when I drove mm-hmm. through it, especially a couple of months ago, it was a different city than what oh, I remember. We like, the, it, like everything Hard. was different, yeah. and it just it was it was very movie set like. How has mm-hmm. that affected you? You know, restaurants were on a shutdown order. They're doing a lot yeah. of takeout delivery and all that. Mm-hmm. Has that has that impacted you from a from a, a you know a lack of job standpoint or mm-hmm. has it provided new opportunities because of all the delivery and people needing to really enhance and get the word out about their restaurants how does how does it has it gone down for you uh, I would say both it definitely affected some of the jobs that I had that I originally was shooting in um, you know in studios or on location because a lot of my clients went from working in these um, these offices with studio spaces to going you know, remote from home. So a lot of the shoots that I normally would go in to shoot no longer were happening because they, well, first of all, we just couldn't gather. And a lot of times with food photography, you kind of need a team of people. You need people cooking, you need people styling, you need, you know, there's the client on set, producers, things like that. So just a group of people was no longer possible. So Mm -hmm. a lot of those jobs, like I, we had to cancel, um, for a good amount of time, I would say a good half year before we even started thinking about going into smaller studios and like kind of um, making our our crew smaller. So I definitely lost that on a lot of those jobs. And of course my restaurant clients were just hit hard and people were closed for months. Um, Even as people trickled back into the industry and outdoor dining and delivery was happening, they just didn't have the budgets, you know, like they were running on such slim margins already. And then with only doing takeout they were honestly it wasn't even like a a solution per se for them it was just it was just really putting a band-aid on a gash type of situation where they were Mm -hmm. still bleeding out like they weren't i don't think it was profitable for many people um so that definitely hurt so for me how i had to pivot was really start thinking about what things i can be doing from home Um, And even pivoting from food into other industries that were not um, affected in the same way. Um, So I kind of talked about this uh, when I was um, talking to Adobe about my um, the Rising Star program that at the time, um, the beauty industry and especially skincare was like, really, really like blossoming because I think everyone was at home like, okay, what do we do now? And like people are like getting into skincare, they're watching videos on YouTube. And that was like a big industry that was that was really booming. And uh, so I was um, in talks with actually a friend who had another friend who was doing a startup. It was a skincare startup. And I was like, you know, this could be a really interesting opportunity for me to venture out into product and beauty photography. And after reaching out and um, talking to them, I got to I got to land this one project where I got to shoot uh, product basically for skincare line. And I was able to do that from home. Uh, I set up a little home studio. It was like, it was crazy. Like my living room was just like light stands everywhere. And um, (laughs) it was like bottles of lotion and like face wash all over. Uh, I had to style everything by myself. I had to source all the propping by myself because there was no team that I could be working with at the time. Um, And especially with like startups too, like they're not like, they don't have the craziest budgets where they're like, yes, like we're going to get all these people and crew on set. Um, So that was a really fun opportunity, actually, because I got to learn a lot. I got to um, create something that was completely within my own vision and um, I think really pushed me to to shoot something that was outside of my comfort zone and to really expand and think about like, okay, what are the ways that I can expand my business that are wise that will allow me to pivot if and when things do dry up for one industry, food, for example. Um, So, I, I mean, I think that was a positive that came out of it because I think I should have been thinking like that already as like a commercial photographer. Um, so that the pandemic really just kind of, um, revealed that sooner. Um, yeah. So I think that that was definitely, um, an opportunity there. 
Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And, and diversification is never a bad thing, right? To right. at least look into other genres and, and just see, yeah. you know, like, like, a, like a, I, I use the analogy of like a submarine, right? Like a submarine is very rarely one cylinder. They're always divided in case one to get hit by a torpedo, that part will flood, but the whole thing doesn't go down. It just stays up. Mm-hmm. So you got to have multiple. Yeah multiple kind of compartments in, in yep. how you do things. You know, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about, um, that Adobe rising star program. What was, what is that? Yeah. And like, what's, what's the deal there? Congratulations, rising star. Yeah. I was saying it. I was like, Oh man, I'm, I'm like shy about it. Now I got all, no, you gotta <laughs> own it. Own it, man. Own it. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. The Adobe Rising Star program um, is a program I think they only started a few years ago, and they basically feature 10 photographers from around the world that um, are doing some cool work that they want to feature that are, um, I suppose, in their words, promising promising young photographers that are on the rise. Uh, and I got to be featured, and it was an awesome opportunity to post some of my work onto um, their channels, the Lightroom Instagram channel specifically, and get a little bit of exposure um, there, and also get paired with a ambassador. So Adobe has the Rising Star class, and they also have the ambassador class, which um, are photographers who are like veterans in the industry who you know know everything about all their products and um, really sing their praises. Um, and I got to be paired up with another photographer who really mentored me, um, not just in the creative um, part of photography, but within the business side of photography as well, which was really, really helpful. So uh, shout out to Summer Murdoch. <laughs> nice. She was my, nice. she was my mentor. Yeah. That is really cool. So yeah, again, congratulations. You are a rising star. So the, and if people want to just, you know, when I don't want to end the interview here, I just want to, since we're on that tangent, Instagram, your Instagram profile is Aaron, E-R-I-N-G-G-G. So yes. people can get head over there and, and check you. out yes, some- follow. <laughs> yeah, some of the tasty stuff you're working on and follow yeah. you. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about gear a little bit, you know, especially in the okay. context of of lighting. Right. So sure. um, are what what is lighting? What's the world of lighting look like for you? Are you a strobe person? Are you using yeah. continuous light natural? Like how, do, how does that go down? I use strobes um, and a lot of times I'm using strobes to create a natural light look. Um, mm-hmm. So. Uh, personally, I use the Godox 8400s, um, which I found have been wonderful and a great price point too. Because I was I was renting a lot of uh, Profoto uh, B1s and B2s, um, and I was like, it, it'd be helpful to have some um, on hand for me to use when I, you know, for for other jobs as well. So I, I decided to get the the 8400s. Um, but a lot of times I'm shooting with a lot of you know umbrellas and soft boxes diffusion paper scrims, really a lot of things to create uh, like that giant soft light that I was talking about for anyone who's interested in doing uh, even food photography on your phones. Um, Yeah, to really recreate a lot of uh, nice window light, make it look like any time of the day I want. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. That's cool. And then what are you what are you shooting with? What camera are you? Sony, Nikon, Canon? I'm a Canon 5D user. I've been using it for so many years. I've, you know, been upgrading the 5D, but I, I think I'm maybe starting to move into the Sony mirrorless systems. I do have an A7 R3 that I'm playing with and trying to get used to, but I've been using the 5D for so long that I think it's just like the one that I feel the most comfortable with. Yeah. But uh, I think just for me and for shooting on location and moving around, having anything smaller, lighter is really great, especially with it's true. the amazing resolution that yeah, mirrorless cameras have. Um, and yeah, and some of the lenses that I use, I would say 80% of the time I'm using either the 2470 or the 100 macro. Those oh, are two, oh. yeah, of probably like the two most used lenses for me. And I think within food photography, the 100 millimeter definitely for sure. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's so cool. I had to ask that because people want to know, you know, what you're shooting with. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, here, here's the final question for you. Hope you're ready for this. Okay. Um, 
of all the different dishes that you've you've photographed. Oh no, I already don't like it. This is gonna be hard. <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> all that you photo- no, it's not. I'm not going where you think I'm going. Okay. Um, of all the dishes that you've photographed, have you been exposed to a type of food that you didn't realize that you liked, and now you can't not have it? Huh. Okay. <laughs> Like, oh, my God, I had no idea that I liked, you know, I don't know, pineapple or something. And right, now right. I'm addicted to pineapple. Um, I'm, This is just off the top of my head because it was a recent one. But I recently um, one of my clients is a, a Brazilian restaurant and oh. they introduced me to Pau de Queijo, which is like these cheesy, like chewy, like it, they're, they're like cheese breads, really. And I like am obsessed with them because they're like mochi ish and they're cheese and they're crunchy, but they're soft. Oh, and like, I, I, yeah, after I had it at their place, I like, I, I've been making it a lot myself, not as good as them, but like, that's something that like I now, like, I make at least like once every like two weeks. Oh. It, it's so good. And there's so many foods. I just love food in general. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, it's, I, it's so hard for me to choose. Like every time I like meet, you know, a new client or we cook something different, like I, I just learn so much. And like, that's like my favorite thing on the job. So like, really it just makes me deepen the appreciation that I already have for so many foods. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So what's, what's next for, for Aaron? Like, what, what are you doing? You know, we're, we're at the, as we record this, it is the beginning of March in 2021. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, which hopefully we have no idea what the future holds, but hopefully we mm-hmm. feel like we're nearing the end of this pandemic yeah. thing that's been bugging us for a while. What is, mm-hmm. what is, while. what do you have yeah, for a little while? What, yeah. what does it look like? What does the future look like? You know, next year, year after, where, where do you hope to be this time in say 2024, 2023? Well, right now what I'm really working on is trying to plant the seeds and network with the people that hopefully eventually when everything opens back up, I can be like ready to offer them photography services, um, network with the people who uh, are decision makers and projects that I find really interesting. Things like um, really doing a cool like cookbook. I, that's actually one of my dream clients. It would be a, a cookbook. Um, I've always wanted to do that. That's kind of where, you know, the world that I started out in was in print. Um, so books have a really special place in my heart. So being able to do that would be amazing. I'm looking um, to do more travel. I think everyone <laughs> kind of wishes to uh, do more travel. I think I'm itching to get out there. So I really want to find clients that are um, within the food and travel space. So uh, maybe resorts and um, restaurant groups and uh, different types of travel industry um, companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are the types of people that I would want to be able to be in talks with in the future. I'd love to work on, this is like a dream job, but like I've been watching so many food documentaries while I've been in, in a lockdown and it'd be so cool to be like a stills photographer for any sort of documentary covering really amazing chefs, really amazing cooks all around the world. That would be such an amazing thing. So I think seeing all that, these are all like dream clients, but I think what I'm really, really working on right now is like self-marketing. Like mm-hmm. I realize that more than ever, it's so important to get myself in front of the people who um, will allow me to do these sorts of things. You know, like I have all these great ideas. I have all these things I want to photograph, but I, in order to do that, I really need to, um, yeah, pl- put myself in a position where I'm in front of these decision makers, people who are hiring photographers to do these cool projects. So investing in marketing right now so that I could be really, really creative and do cool things later on. That's what I've been working on. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Marketing is, is near and dear to my heart. I'm a marketer. Yeah. And, I know. Uh, yeah. You can't, you can't, yeah. It's not a, this stuff is not a field of dreams. If you build it, they right. will come. If That's you honestly, build it and tell them about it, they will come. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's yeah. really a majority of the job. Like I would say 80% of my job really is the marketing and 20% yep. of it is the actual shooting and being creative because you can't do that without the, without the 80%. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a request for you. So mm-hmm. as you as you go on this journey of, of coming out of the, 
you know, the cave into the sunlight after the <laughs> lockdown <Yeah>. ends. <laughs> you know, it's the end of the movie. It's the end of the movie and people are coming back out to see what the damage is. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, you, I, I would love an Aaron Ng food photography workshop. That would oh, be wow. That's awesome. Dangerous. Where you get like 12 people, 6, 12 wow. people, take us to your favorite restaurant, uh, and, and we Any shoot ideas. our food, then eat it. That would be amazing. That would, that would be, be really amazing. fun. That would be something I'd want to do anyway. Like that right. just sounds like something that is like a hangout for me. Like let's go to a restaurant that I really love and like let's just make all this food look amazing. Yes. That'd be really fun for me, honestly. Please do it. Please do Even it. Even you saying that right now got me excited. Like who yes. which which one of my chef friends would I like call up and be like, Can we just come and shoot your whole menu for fun? And then we eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be amazing, right? And then, you know, of course, people would pay for their food. They pay for their food and then pay your workshop fee. It would, I would love it if it was at a at one of those, uh, either a hotel or mm. um, or a restaurant that had private room in the back, you know, where oh. you could, you know, perfect. You know, and see, it's in your head. I saw your light bulb go <laughs> Now you got me excited, and I'm just like, can we just do this tomorrow? That would be fantastic. I mean, especially oh. now when people are like, I think now would be the time to do that. Because now when restaurants are just now reopening and photographers are itching for yeah. something to do, it's like, yeah. come do this with me and oh. enjoy enjoy your freedom again while taking yeah. photos and eating and drinking wine. You know, what's not to like? <laughs> So. You'll, you'll be the first invite, Frederick. I'm thinking I'm about in. it already. I'm oh. in. I'm 100% in. And I, and I hope I'm you get through. the word out. Perfect. Yes. Oh, All right. It. So uh, Instagram is Aaron, E-R-I-N-G-G-G. And your website? What's the website again? It is AaronNing.com. E-R-I-N-N-G.com. Awesome. Aaron Ng, thank you so much for coming on. Congratulations Perhaps. on being an, an Adobe Rising Star, which means we got to keep our eye on you. And you, uh, congratulations on this new uh, food workshop thing that you're going to be doing. <laughs> you are a marketer. <laughs> Uh, you're committed now. You're committed. Uh, yes, so, I am. Anyone in the TWIP audience that thinks it's a good idea that Erin yeah. Ng does drop a food a photography, <laughs> drop her a message, Erin GGG. Drop her a message and say, yes, right. you should do it. So. All right. Tell me what restaurants you're, you're trying to go to. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. All right, Erin. Right, Aaron. You have a good, a good rest of your week and a good weekend, <laughs> and I'll be in touch. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. This is Twitter.